Hi, welcome to St. Charles, Arkansas, right on the banks of the White River. This small town of a little over 200 people is remembered as the site of what some historians call the deadliest shot of the Civil War. To understand what occurred, we have to go back to that fateful day on June 17, 1862. A few weeks earlier, Major General Thomas C. Hindman, anticipating the fall of Memphis, ordered the White River to be obstructed at St. Charles. This site was chosen because the first bluffs above the mouth of the White River are located here. So limited were the Confederate resources, though, he could only send a small detachment of Navy and infantry to man the defenses. Confederate fortifications consisted of two batteries, supported by 35 infantry. The upper battery contained two 32-pounder cannons, and the lower battery had three smaller pieces. A small howitzer was deployed south of the batteries with the infantry. Command was held by Captain Joseph Fry of the CSS Moorpaws. At 6 o'clock on the morning of the 17th, a Union fleet appeared below St. Charles. Time had run out for the Confederates. This flotilla consisted of four warships and transports containing the 46th Indiana. This fleet had been sent up the White River to supply a Union army in need. It was led by the USS Mound City under the command of Captain Augustus Kilty. Passing the lower battery, the two lead gunboats began to exchange fire with the upper battery under command of Lieutenant J.W. Dunnington. The Mound City advanced to within about 600 yards of the enemy when a well-directed shot penetrated her lower casemate, a little above and forward of the gun port, killing three men and exploding the steam drum. The massive explosion wrecked the Mound City as wounded soldiers leapt into the river for safety. Captain Kilty, who had been proudly pacing his deck just moments before with enemy shot and shell whizzing past him, was left scalded and suffering. Many thought his wounds were mortal, but he survived only losing a leg. Confederates on shore began to fire into the swimming sailors before they themselves are pushed back to the upper battery by Colonel G.N. Fitch and his 46th Indiana, which had landed just below the rebels. Meeting at the upper battery, Captain Fry ordered his officers and men to scatter as Union soldiers moved in around their position. Captain Fry is wounded and captured. With both batteries taken, Fitch signals to the Navy, and the Battle of St. Charles is over. Nearly all of the Union casualties came from the Mound City. Of a crew of 175 officers and men, 82 were killed in the casemate, 43 were killed or drowned in the river, and 25 were wounded, including Captain Kilty. Only three officers and 22 men escaped injury from this tragedy. Today, there are several sites you can visit in St. Charles about the battle. This includes an historical marker near the river. There's also a small museum which contains exhibits and a diorama. Outside is one of the original cannons from the battle. Nearby can be found a large monument identifying all of the men who lost their lives at the Battle of St. Charles. Although a small affair in numbers, the engagement at St. Charles is remembered for that one horrific shot which resulted in the loss of so many lives. The Mound City would be repaired and finish out the war. Many of the Confederates who escaped would later be captured at Arkansas Post. After the war, Joseph Fry would take command of a ship named the Virginius that supplied Cuban revolutionaries wanting independence from Spain. After being captured by the Spanish, he was executed on November 7, 1873, a long journey from his defense of St. Charles in 1862.